This is a tutorial on a loadout voting system built in UEFN and Verse. The functionality allows players to push a button and vote. Note that you could use teleporters or shoot things as well. Afterwards, we need a button to grant the players the loadout. Here you see I vote, then I change my vote, and the loadout count on the billboard changes. Then my inventory changes when I push the button to load uh, loadout. That's our goal. Let's talk about how we're going to achieve it. This is a diagram breaking down our desired functionality. We've got a vote input 1 and 2 through n. I use this to re represent that we can have as many sets of devices attached for voting as we want. Then we check to see if the player has voted, then either add or change the player vote. Afterwards, we display the current results. That's our voting system. Then we have a finished vote function we can call where we get the winning option and apply the classes to the players. Over my sample, I've set up four fillboards with four guns. There are any number of ways to do this graphically. This is an extremely simplistic sample. Here are the buttons, and then we have four sets of devices that include a class designer device, a class selector device, and a custom device called a vote class option device. Then I have a vote manager device that interacts with the vote class manager devices. This is a diagram for a single vote class option device. It has a vote button that inputs to a player voting. Then that talks to the vote manager and it also has an update billboard function that just updates the billboard associated with it. There's also a get class ID function which the vote manager needs. Finally, it has a function to set all players to a class which talks to the class and team selectors devices. Now is a great time to like and subscribe if you've been thinking about it. I'm looking to get enough subscribers to keep doing this. The class and team selector devices are connected to our class designer devices through a class ID. They aren't pictured on our functionality diagram because they are base UEFN devices, but there is a class ID associated with each class designer device. We use that class ID many places, so having aligned class IDs is very important. The vote manager device only interacts with vote class option devices. That said, it has internal functionality keeping track of the votes that each player casts and a function that returns the current most voted class. Thus, the first workflow is voting for a class causing class count updates. The second workflow is getting the winner and setting all players' classes. The get winner set and set class function first gets the winning class, then selects its vote class option device from the connected devices and sends a message telling that device to set all players' class to its class ID. Maps and arrays are data structures which work slightly differently from how they do in other programming languages in a few ways, so I'll give them a small introduction. The simpler data structure used in this device is an array. The array here is all the vote class option devices. An array is like a peapod. A set of peas are in the pod, and they are all the same type of thing. The reason arrays are useful in programming is you can iterate through them and do something for every p. Overall, using data structures where you store multiple similar things can allow you to write far less code when compared to working with individual variables for each value. A map is a kind of specialized array. In other programming languages, they are often called dictionaries, and the way a map works is you have a map that has values in it, and those values give directions to objects. The key, which can be any unique object, tells the map when you access it where to look for or set what is referred to as the value. In this case, I create a unique value that rep represents each player's vote, because we assume that player objects are unique. So in a chunk of code, I first check the current class votes map for a vote that the player has made. Then I either recreate the map with a new value for the vote or add the vote to it, the existing map. Verse arrays and maps are different from many other programming languages' similar data structures because you cannot delete from or change their values. Their values are what is called immutable. The reason, reason for this is verse forward planning for massive concurrency. Finally, we'll take a look at the vote class option device code. Here we have a set of editables that you set in the editor, a vote manager, the vote button associated, the billboard showing the count, the class and team selector, and the class ID. When the device starts, we have the player votes function listen for a vote button interaction. When a player votes, the function then calls vote for class on the vote manager, then has the vote manager update all the option billboards. 
the vote manager and sends a call back into the update billboard function for this and the, all the other option devices. This is so that all the billboards are updated and the billboards can be associated directly with the class option. Finally, the set all players to class function is called by the manager and iterates through all the players in the game, setting them to a class. Note the design decision here to keep all the functionality related to one class ID contained in a single device. Wrapping up, there's a link to the code on GitHub for this system in the description of this video. I'll also put the sorts in the Epic Snippets repository. Your homework is to step one, implement the code by hooking up the devices. Step two, change the buttons to teleporters, and step three for the most advanced topic is to resolve ties in a random way. Give it a shot and let me know if there are other topics you really want covered, questions you have about the system, or other systems you'd like to see built.